Namibia, officially the Republic of Namibia, Afrikaans, Republic van Namibi, and formerly German Southwest Africa and then Southwest Africa, is a country in southern Africa whose western border is the Atlantic Ocean. It shares land borders with Zambia and Angola to the north, Botswana to the east and South Africa to the south and east. Although it does not border Zimbabwe, less than 200 meters of the Zambezi River separates them at their closest points. It gained independence from South Africa on 21 March 1990, following the Namibian War of Independence. Its capital and largest city is Windhoek. Namibia is a member state of the United Nations, the Southern African Development Community, the African Union, and the Commonwealth of Nations. The dry lands of Namibia were inhabited since early times by San, Damara, and Namaqua, and since about the 14th century AD by immigrating Bantu who came with the Bantu expansion. Most of the territory became a German imperial protectorate in 1884 and remained a German colony until the end of World War I. In 1920, the League of Nations mandated the country to South Africa, which imposed its laws and, from 1948, its apartheid policy. The port of Walvis Bay and the offshore Penguin Islands had been annexed by the Cape Colony under the British Crown by 1878 and had become an integral part of the new Union of South Africa at its creation in 1910. Uprisings and demands by African leaders led the UN to assume direct responsibility over the territory. It recognized the Southwest Africa People's Organization as the official representative of the Namibian people in 1973. Namibia, however, remained under South African administration during this time as Southwest Africa. Following internal violence, South Africa installed an interim administration in Namibia in 1985. Namibia obtained full independence from South Africa in 1990, with the exception of Walvis Bay and the Penguin Islands, which remained under South African control until 1994. Namibia has a population of 2.1 million people and a stable multi-party parliamentary democracy. Agriculture, herding, tourism and the mining industry, including mining for gem diamonds, uranium, gold, silver, and base metals, form the basis of Namibia's economy. Given the presence of the arid Namib desert, it is one of the least densely populated countries in the world. Namibia enjoys high political, economic and social stability. History the name of the country is derived from the Namib Desert, considered to be the oldest desert in the world. Before its independence in 1990, the area was known first as German Southwest Africa, then as Southwest Africa, reflecting the colonial occupation by the Germans and the South Africans. Pre-colonial period the dry lands of Namibia were inhabited since early times by San, Damara, Namar and, since about the 14th century AD, by immigrating Bantu who came with the Bantu expansion from Central Africa. Their encounters with the nomadic Nama tribes were largely peaceful. The missionaries accompanying the Orlams were well received by them. The right to use waterholes and grazing was granted against an annual payment on their way further northwards. However, the Orlams encountered clans of the hero tribe at Vindhoek, Gobabas, and Okahanja which were less accommodating. The Nama hero war broke out in 1880, with hostilities ebbing only when Imperial Germany deployed troops to the contested places and cemented the status quo between Nama, Orlams, and Hero. The first Europeans to disembark and explore the region were the Portuguese navigators Diogo Cao in 1485 and Bartolomeu Diaz in 1486. Still the region was not claimed by the Portuguese crown. However, like most of sub-Saharan Africa, Namibia was not extensively explored by Europeans until the 19th century. When traders and settlers arrived, principally from Germany and Sweden, in the late 19th century Dorsland trekkers crossed the area on their way from the Transvaal to Angola. Some of them settled in Namibia instead of continuing their journey. 
German rule Namibia became a German colony in 1884 under Otto von Bismarck to forestall British encroachment and was known as German South West Africa. However, the Palgrave mission by the British governor in Cape Town had determined that only the natural deep water harbour of Walvis Bay was worth occupying, and this was annexed to the Cape Province of British South Africa. From 1904 to 1907, the Hero and the Namiqua took up arms against the Germans and incalculated punitive action by the German occupiers. The first genocide of the 20th century was committed. In the Hero and Namaqua genocide, 10,000 Nama and approximately 65,000 heroes were systematically murdered. The survivors, when finally released from detention, were subjected to a policy of dispossession, deportation, forced labor, racial segregation and discrimination in a system that in many ways anticipated apartheid. Most Africans were confined to so-called native territories, which later under South African rule post-1949 were turned into homelands. Indeed, some historians have speculated that the German genocide in Namibia was a model used by Nazis in the Holocaust. The memory of genocide remains relevant to ethnic identity in independent Namibia and to relations with Germany. The German government formally apologized for the Namibian genocide in 2004. South African rule South Africa occupied the colony in 1915 after defeating the German force during World War I and administered it from 1919 onward as a League of Nations mandate territory. Although the South African government desired to incorporate Southwest Africa into its territory, it never officially did so, although it was administered as the de facto fifth province, with the white minority having representation in the whites-only parliament of South Africa, as well as electing their own local administration the SWA Legislative Assembly. The South African government also appointed the SWA administrator, who had extensive powers. As a former German colony, Namibia originally drove on the right. After South Africa occupied Southwest Africa during World War I, it was made a South African mandate by the League of Nations, and as such, drivers were ordered to drive on the left soon afterwards. Following the League's replacement by the United Nations in 1946, South Africa refused to surrender its earlier mandate to be replaced by a United Nations trusteeship agreement, requiring closer international monitoring of the territory's administration. The Hero Chiefs Council submitted a number of petitions to the UN calling for it to grant Namibia independence during the 1950s. During the 1960s, when European powers granted independence to their colonies and trust territories in Africa, pressure mounted on South Africa to do so in Namibia. In 1966, the International Court of Justice dismissed a complaint brought by Ethiopia and Liberia against South Africa's continued presence in the territory, but the UN General Assembly subsequently revoked South Africa's mandate. While in 1971 the International Court of Justice issued an advisory opinion declaring South Africa's continued administration to be illegal, in response to the 1966 ruling by the International Court of Justice, South West Africa People's Organization Military Wing, People's Liberation Army of Namibia, a guerrilla group began their armed struggle for independence. But it was not until 1988 that South Africa agreed to end its occupation of Namibia, in accordance with a UN peace plan for the entire region. During the South African occupation of Namibia, white commercial farmers, most of whom came as settlers from South Africa and represented 0.2% of the national population, owned 74% of the arable land. Outside the central southern area of Namibia, the country was divided into homelands. The version of South African ban to Stan applied to Namibia, although only a few were actually established because indigenous Namibians often did not cooperate. 
In 1978 the UN Security Council passed UN Resolution 435 which planned a transition toward independence for Namibia. Attempts to persuade South Africa to agree to the plan's implementation were not successful until 1988 when the transmission to independence finally started under a diplomatic agreement between South Africa. Angola and Cuba, with the USSR and the USA as observers, under which South Africa agreed to withdraw and demobilize its forces in Namibia. As a result, Cuba agreed to pull back its troops in southern Angola sent to support the MPLA in its war for control of Angola with UNITA, a combined UN civilian and peacekeeping force called Intag under Finnish diplomat Marti Artisari was deployed from April 1989 to March 1992. Monitor the peace process, elections and supervise military withdrawals. As Antag began to deploy peacekeepers, military observers, police, and political workers, hostilities were briefly renewed on the day the transition process was supposed to begin. After a new round of negotiations, a second date was set and the elections process began in earnest. After the return of SWAPO exiles, Namibia's first one-person one-vote elections for the Constitutional Assembly took place in November 1989. The official election slogan was, Free and Fair Elections. This was won by SWAPO although it did not gain the two-thirds majority it had hoped for, the South African-backed Democratic Turnhill Alliance became the official opposition. The elections were peaceful and declared free and fair. The Namibian constitution adopted in February 1990 incorporated protection for human rights, compensation for state expropriations of private property, an independent judiciary and an executive presidency. The country officially became independent on 21 March 1990. Sam Nujoma was sworn in as the first president of Namibia watched by Nelson Mandela and representatives from 147 countries, including 20 heads of state, while Vis Bay was ceded to Namibia in 1994 upon the end of apartheid in South Africa. After independence since independence Namibia has successfully completed the transition from white minority apartheid rule to parliamentary democracy. Multi-party democracy was introduced and has been maintained, with local, regional and national elections held regularly. Several registered political parties are active and represented in the National Assembly. Although the Swapo Party has won every election since independence, the transition from the 15-year rule of President Sam Nujoma to his successor Hafika Punya Pohamba in 2005 went smoothly. The Namibian government has promoted a policy of national reconciliation and issued an amnesty for those who had fought on either side during the Liberation War. The civil war in Angola had some impact on Namibians living in the north of the country. In 1998, Namibia Defense Force troops were sent to the Democratic Republic of the Congo as part of a Southern African Development Community contingent. In 1999, a secessionist attempt in the northeast and Caprivi Strip was successfully quashed. The Caprivi conflict involved an armed conflict between the Caprivi Liberation Army, a rebel group aiming for the secession of the Caprivi Strip led by Mishake Muyongo, and the Namibian government.